first knife at the age of 12. My grandfather made knives as a hobby after his retirement and uh, we, my sister and myself often used to spend holidays at my grandparents' house. So I think I got under his feet and he gave me a piece of steel and said, yeah, make yourself useful, make a knife. And from that time, I've never left it. It's been a bug that has bit me and I've never stopped making knives. And even during my high school, it was the way I made pocket money. Uh, I landed up in the gunsmithing division in the army during my national service. We had a fantastic workshop provided by the government. And when they found out that I was a knife maker, I became the official knife maker of retirement gifts for these fancy high-ranking army people. So that was very fun. Uh, after the army, I studied mechanical engineering and I was able to apply a lot of the, the technology and the science of metallurgy that I learned into the knives. And uh, I think part of the design features as well uh, come from a sound engineering background. Um, I very nearly studied jewellery manufacture and design uh, instead of engineering. Uh, I feel I do have a creative side in me as well. Obviously the knives is not just the functional tool but they do become a form of functional art as well. Um, I was given the opportunity to go full-time and share a workshop with another woodwork craftsman uh, 12 years ago and since 1996 I've been full-time knife making and it was at this uh, theme park in Johannesburg, Gold Reef City, where I met the, the blacksmith of the theme park and I spent a lot of time visiting the blacksmith shop and only when people realized that the blacksmith was actually a lady did they understand and that was where I met Heather and up to that time I'd never hammered any steel I was making knives by what is called the stock removal method where we take a stainless knife steel and we cut and grind it to shape uh, and then fit, uh, harden it and fit the handle it was only when I met Heather that uh, hammering hot steel became exciting. I grew up loving animals and wanted to be a vet, but I was allergic to fur and feathers. But luckily I wasn't allergic to horses. So the next best thing was to become a farrier. And when I left school I studied in the United States in Montana as a farrier. And part of the course was a blacksmithing course which included making your own tools and forging your horseshoes and blacksmithing. So I came back to South Africa and started shoeing horses, but my allergy then developed into a very serious allergy to horses. And after a few years, I had to stop working with them full time. So I went more onto the blacksmithing side, the artistic blacksmithing, traditional blacksmithing. And I worked at Gold Reef City Theme Park. And there I did all of these signboards and railings and horseshoeing demonstrations, got to work in the circus with animals, and it was great fun. And I started to make Damascus steel, which is like the ultimate in blacksmithing. Forge welding is, is quite a difficult process. So this is now taking it to another level, where you're not just forge welding the same piece of steel back on itself, you're using different types of steel. And I started making Damascus steel to sell to the other knife makers, not really considering making knives until I met Kevin, who shared a workshop there with, with a woodworker. And I then started to learn to make knives. And then that was the ultimate, to make the steel and to make the knives. Then in 1998, we went to the United States to the only bladesmithing school in the world in Arkansas, in a tiny little town called Old Washington. And that is where James Black had his original blacksmith shop. And as history tells, he made the original Bowie knife for Jim Bowie. And Jim Bowie made that knife very uh, popular. And that is now a, a sort of the United States historical knife. And Kevin loves making Bowie knives. And there we learned to forge knives and make Damascus steel. We were there for three weeks on course and we also took part in their cutting competition 
We'd never heard of a cutting competition. Kevin came joint second and even got to be on the front page of the Wall Street Journal. We came back to South Africa and we started the Southern African Bladesmiths Association, SABRE, and we now have over 50 members. And we started to try and revive bladesmithing. In America, it's very popular. The American Bladesmith Society has thousands of members and it's larger than the Knife Makers Guild in America. Here, the stock removers outnumber the bladesmiths at the moment, but we're trying to change that. And together we then moved away from Goldview City, bought a lovely little plot in Belfast. People say, why Belfast? It's because it's a nice town. It's cool, and when you play with fire, you want to live in a cool place, and they've got great fishing. Yeah, when we combined our workshop, suddenly we had almost double of all the equipment. So now we've got, got the facilities to almost tackle anything, whether it's engineering or blacksmithing. We've got tools for everything. can never have enough tools. <laughs> right, we've just finished our annual Knife Makers Guild exhibition, and the two of us have won an award with this dagger for the finest own Damascus. Now, uh, the knife was a collaboration between Heather and myself, where Heather made the steel and the blade, and I've done the finishing. So this is a typical example of what we call a heaven knife, Heather and Kevin. Okay, I generally make the Damascus for the knives. Damascus is an old technique whereby you fold different types of steel, and it's a laminate. So I would clean up some rather large blocks of steel using a high carbon steel, like a spring steel, and then I would use a high nickel bearing tool steel to give another color, and also pure nickel foil. I would then arc weld that together and weld the handle onto it. Then I put it in our gas forge, and that forge gets up to about 1,400 degrees C. And when it's up to temperature, it's a temperature just before the steel melts. And I then hammer that and it becomes one piece of steel. It's called forge welding. Then I draw the billet out and I cut it in half and fold it back onto itself. So you've doubled the layers. And I repeat the process. And in between the folding, I can add small pieces of steel as well to give a different effect. So I can then build up my layer count up to about 300 layers. Then I decide on how I want to pattern those layers because you can manipulate them after you've got your layer count up. You can twist it, you can grind grooves into it, you can drill holes into it, and all of that will give you a different pattern. So once I've done that, I then heat it up, flatten it out. I then need to anneal that piece, I need to make it soft because either Kevin's going to work with it afterwards to make a knife or I'm going to sell it to another knife maker. So I need to put it into an, another heat treat furnace, a digitally controlled one, at 750 degrees. I let it soak at that temperature for a while and then I let it cool overnight so it cools down very slowly. After that it has quite thick fire scale on it so I leave it in pool acid for a day, then I brush that off, and then I surface ground, grind the steel so that it's perfectly flat and true. After that comes the best part, you polish it and you etch it in acid, and that brings out the pattern. The acid eats away at different rates on the different types of steel, and then your pattern is revealed, and it's like Christmas Day, because every time it's a different pattern, and it's an, a different combination of steels, and it's always beautiful. Right, once Heather has finished forging the knife, and uh, well, shall I say the Damascus, once Heather's finished forging the Damascus and then she's shaped the knife, it gets given to me when, when I then grind the blade to shape. It gets given back to Heather where she then hardens it. And then after that is the polishing and the fitting of the handle. Uh, I get to do the leather work as well. So in a nutshell, she does the hot work and I do the cold work. Heather and myself have a passion for historical weapons and tools. Uh, Heather's likes are slightly different to mine. 
Uh, she enjoys making traditional African weapons, spears, African swords, axes. Uh, they, they are actually very beautiful when you look at them and very different to what most knife makers would consider making. I enjoy also the historical things but more medieval European warhammers and axes. We've done some Red Indian tomahawks and I have a particular fondness for the American Bowie knife. I make very few folding knives. Uh, I find them very fiddly, too tiny, and the surfaces to embellish are, are really small. I find a big knife, like a dagger or a bowie knife, much more uh, conducive to expressing one's creativity, and people will rather pick up a big knife than a little knife. <laughs> Our customers include both the outdoor enthusiast who is looking for a superior working tool, we also have collectors who are looking for one-off creations of functional art. And we would like people to think of our handmade knives not just as weapons of mass destruction or, uh, you know, they are sometimes gentlemen's jewellery or just a superior tool which outperforms so many of the cheap factory junk that is available. So you do get what you pay for. Creating something that will outlast us and many generations afterwards and there are very few people that can create something like that. And you put your heart and your soul, very often quite a bit of blood and sweat into it, hopefully no tears, but it's a part of you and it's got your name on it and it's just so lovely that there are people out there that appreciate handmade items and are prepared to pay for them and you know that they're going to look after them and hopefully hand them on from generation to generation. We offer knife making courses because we feel it's important to share our knowledge and we have either, either three day courses or five day courses. The five day course includes making Damascus. The three day course is great fun. We have a lot of people that have never worked with tools before, let alone made a knife. They come along, we help them make a knife from start to finish, including the sheath and they go home with that finished product that they can use and the knowledge to make more knives. The five day course is, is a little bit um, more strenuous and you get to make a Damascus blade on that. Heather and myself have a passion for fly fishing and Heather particularly loves her horses so it's obvious that when we shut the shop for the day in the late afternoon, it's a decision whether we go and throw a line and catch a trout or go for a horse ride into the forests. It's a difficult decision. If you read the bottom line of our business card, it says, please visit by appointment only because we might be 4 by 4 fly fishing or horse riding. So we also enjoy 4 by 4 and camping, clay pigeon shooting, bow shooting, you name it, we have a lot of fun out here. P particularly the outdoors. Um, Belfast has a wonderful little country atmosphere and we've got a little two-wheel horse cart and it's not uncommon for us on a Sunday afternoon to go to the local pub with the horse cart and people look at us funny, they see us arriving in horse and cart and either they think they haven't got money for petrol or they're just very eccentric. <laughs>